hello children the next story that we are going to discuss today is the beggar by anton chekhov anton chekhov was a famous storyteller from russia he has written short stories and plays and the stories written by anton chekhov are on beautiful themes the theme of this story is how you can transform a completely spoiled person by kind and sympathetic treatment if you are kind loving and sympathetic towards a spoiled man he also can be changed that is the theme of this story the beggar in this story is lashkov his name is lashkov there are two more characters another important character is volga she is a cook and the third important character is sergey sergey was an advocate and volga a lady an elderly lady is his cook in this story as the introduction goes you can see here on the screen what induced the beggar lashkov to change his ways let us read and find out and as i have told you compassionate behavior kind behavior okay and loving behavior can transform anybody that's what the author wants to establish in this story <clears throat> the story begins like this the first paragraph kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for 3 days i have had nothing to eat i haven't 5 kopecks for a lodging kopecks means these are the russian coins this is a this is a russian story and these kopecks are the russian coins they are the units of a ruble ruble is a russian rupee and these kopecks are the coins they are the part of the rupee so i haven't 5 kopecks for a lodging i swear it be for god for 8 years i was a village school teacher and then i lost my place through intrigues intrigues means conspiracy conspiracy some conspiracy some plot was hatched against him the speaker is saying okay then i fell a victim to calumny calumny means slander or defamation okay you trap somebody by by spreading some wrong information about him by defaming him that is called calumny it's a year now since i have had nothing to do these are the words with which the story begins these are the words spoken by a beggar okay these words are spoken by a beggar to the advocate sergey okay the second paragraph now you, you can see it is it becomes clear in the second paragraph the advocate sergey looked at the ragged fawn colored overcoat of the suppliant suppliant means one who makes appeal one who makes a request or appeal so the man who was making this request as we have seen in the previous paragraph he wanted arms he wanted arms some help in the form of money so he is a suppliant so sergey looked at the ragged fawn colored overcoat of the suppliant at his dull drunken eyes at the red spot on either cheek and it seemed to him that seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before sergey he was an advocate and he was very clever it strikes to him that he had seen that man somewhere before i have now had an offer of a position in the province of 
Kaluga. Kaluga is a province in Russia. The medicant went on. Medicant is beggar. Beggar who has nothing and who goes on begging. The medicant went on. But I haven't the money to get there. Help me kindly. I am ashamed to ask, but I am obliged to by circumstances. Now the beggar goes on telling lies after lies. He says in the previous paragraph you have seen that he was a village school teacher. Okay. And he was the a village school teacher for eight years. And some people they laid a plot against him. They conspired against him and they made false allegations against him and he was removed. He was ousted from his job and he is jobless and that's why he's begging he says okay then he says now in this paragraph you have seen that uh, one position has been offered to him in the province of kaluga and he says i am a beggar and i have no money to go to that place so he asks help and he says that he is ashamed but he is forced by the circumstances to ask for money to ask for arms well sergey's eyes fell on the men's overshoes one of which was high and the other low and he suddenly remembered something as soon as sergey sergey was a clever man he was an advocate an elderly elderly man okay and a seasoned person so as he saw his overshoes something he remembers suddenly look here it seems to me i met you the day before yesterday in sadova street he said sergey said to the beggar but you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled and not a village school teacher do you remember sergey asks the beggar now beggar is caught he is caught he is caught by his own words okay so he stammers he doesn't know what to answer and how to answer so he says no that can't be so mumbled the beggar taken aback he was taken by surprise he was, he was taken aback i am a village school teacher and if you like i can show you my papers he says i i can show you my papers he says have done with lying you call yourself a student and you have told me what you had been expelled for don't you remember sergey gets angry sergey flushed flushed means his red his face becomes red due to anger sergey flushed and turned from the ragged creature ragged means the one whose clothes are torn and worn out ragged clothes he was putting on ragged or torn old clothes so turned from the ragged creature with an expression of disgust disgust is extreme dislike or distaste that's called disgust so he was disgusted with that fellow and he turns his face okay then what happens you see the next paragraph runs like this sergey further says this is dishonesty my dear sir he cried angrily this is swindling swindling is cheating you are cheating people sergey angrily speaks out he says you are swindling you are cheating people i shall send the police for you damn you curse you he says i'll send i'll see you behind the bars police will arrest you i will report the matter to the police that you are cheating people by telling lies then as the beggar was taken aback he comes out with the truth he says sir he said laying his hand on his heart the fact is 
I was lying. He admits that he was lying. I am neither a student nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. It was a false story, he says. Fiction. Formerly, I sang in a Russian choir. A Russian choir means the group of singers. He was a singer in the group, he says. Okay. And was sent away for drunkenness. He tells Sergei that he was a drunkard and that's why he was ousted, he was removed from the group of, group of Russian choir. But what else can I do? I can't get along without lying. No one will give me anything when I tell the truth. What can I do? Now he is trying to win Sergei's sympathy by trapping Sergei in his words and he wants to extract some money from Sergei as he used to do with the others earlier. But Sergei is very clever. He, he is giving a very tough stand to him. He says, what can you do? You ask what you can do, cried Sergei, coming close to him. Work. That's what you can do. You must work. Work? Yes. I know that myself, but where can I find work? The beggar asks. Okay, it's true, I can work. But where can? Where is the work? How would you like to chop wood for me? Sergei says, I would give you work of wood chopping. Can you do that for me? I wouldn't refuse to do that. But in these days, even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread. That means even the skilled woodcutters do not get, get job these days, he says. They are jobless. They are without any work. He is still trying to escape. That's why he speaks these words to Sergei, so that he could escape. But Sergei also won't let him go. He says, will you come and chop wood for me? Yes, sir, I will. Very well. We will soon find out. Then Sergei hastened along, rubbing his hands. He called his cook out of the kitchen. Here, Olga, he said, take this gentleman into the wood shed and let him chop wood. Now, now Sergei has caught the man, the beggar in his words. He has caught the man by his words. And he says, okay, I'm employing you as a wood chopper in my wood shed. You go there and chop wood for me. For that, you would be, you will be paid in cash. Okay, he calls Volga, an elderly lady who was a cook in his kitchen and asks her to take the stranger, that beggar, to the woodshed for wood chopping. The, scare, the scarecrow of a beggar, the scarecrow means in the fields they are making some false figures, they are erecting some false figures to, to scare the birds. They are called the scare, scarecrow. They look, they look like the figures of man or the other creatures, but they are not actually. They are the false or fake figures. They are scare, they are a scarecrow for scaring, scaring the birds, keeping the birds away from the fields. So like that he looked, the beggar looked like a scarecrow. So the scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his soldiers as if in perplexity. He was confused, he was, per, he was perplexed, okay. So he just shakes his soldiers and went irresolutely, most unwillingly. He was not resolute, most unwilling. He goes, he went after the cook, 
after Volga, he goes to the wood shed. It was obvious from his gait, from his gait means, gait means walking or movement. I have written here, you can see. The way he walked or he moved, it was very clear from his movement, from his walking, that he had not consented to go and chop wood. That means he was unwilling to go and chop wood for Sergei because he was hungry and wanted work. But simply from pride and shame and because he had been trapped by his own words. See, he had, he had agreed to chop wood not because he was hungry and he wanted work. No, not for that reason. But he had self-respect. Okay, and now he had sense of shame because he had been trapped by his own words. He had said that he doesn't have any work to do and Sergei offered him work. He offered him the work. He offered him the work of wood chopping. So he can't say that I won't do any work because he's trapped by his own words. And because of that self-pride and self-respect and the sense of shame, the beggar agrees or consents to go into the woodshed and chop wood for Sergei. Okay. It was obvious too that his strength had been undermined by vodka. Vodka is a Russian drink, Russian liquor. He used to drink so much and his strength had gone down. It had been undermined. Okay, His health had gone down. His physical strength had gone down by too much drinking. And that he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for toil. For doing hard work, he had no inclination or bent of mind. He didn't want to work at all because his health had badly gone down by excessive drinking. He was a sot, S-O-T, sot, sot means a drunkard. He was a drunkard. He was a, he was an, he was a habitual drunkard. Well, the next paragraph, my dear boys and girls, Sergei hurried into the dining room from its window one could see the woodshed and everything that went on in the yard. So, Sergei hurriedly goes in his dining room and from the dining room window, he would see what is happening in the, in the, in the wood yard where the wood chopping work is to be done by the stranger. He wants to see. So, he, so hurriedly, quickly, he moves to the uh, the dining room and from the window through the window he will see okay standing at the window sargi saw the cook and the beggar come out into the yard by the back door and make their way across the dirty snow to the shed dirty snow in russia when there is snowfall the land is snow covered the courtyard also is snow covered okay and the snow when and there is soil also so when you walk on soil the snow also becomes soiled and it becomes dirty as it starts melting and mixes up with soil so the snow had become dirty in the courtyard okay so dirty snow their way they made their way across the dirty snow to the shed so they walk on the snow the wet ground and enter the shed the woodshed olga glared wrathfully wrathfully means angrily wrath means extreme anger wild anger okay olga glared wrathfully at her companion she looked at him with extreme anger showed him aside with her elbow she gave, gave him a push with her elbow, with her hand elbow, okay? Unlocked the shed and angrily banged the door. 
she opened the door of the shed and angrily banged the door closed the door slammed the door well then what happens you see in this picture you can see olga is there the beggar is there lashkov and he is sergey in this picture you can see then <clears throat> next now he's the sergey is watching through the window next he saw the pseudo teacher pseudo means false falsely he had presented himself as a teacher he had introduced himself as a teacher earlier so the, that's why he, he the author calls him pseudo teacher or false teacher he was not a teacher he was not a teacher at all next he saw the pseudo teacher seat himself on a log and become lost in thought with his red cheeks resting on his fists so as the beggar enters the woodshed woodshed there he sits he doesn't want to work and rests his cheeks in his fist fist and he's sitting there most unwilling to start the work of wood chopping the woman means volga the woman flung down an axe at his feet spat angrily spitting with mouth she so spat angrily and threw an axe at his feet and judging from his expression judging from the expression of her lips began to scold him she started scolding the beggar the beggar irresolutely pulled a billet of wood towards him a small log of wood the beggar pulled towards him because olga was forcing him so very unwi unwillingly most irresolutely he pulled a log of wood small log of wood towards him set it up between his feet and tapped it feebly with the x in a very feeble manner softly he started tapping the wood with x that soft tapping won't cut the wood it won't chop the wood okay the billet wavered and fell down it slipped and it fell down to the ground the beggar again pulled it to him blew on his freezing hands it was cold and his hands were extremely cold and they were they were freezing so he blows with his mouth on his freezing hands and tapped it with his ex cautiously again he starts tapping the wood to cut it very cautiously as if afraid to hitting his overshoe or of cutting off his finger he is very cautious not to cut his finger or overshoe while cutting the wood the stick of wood again fell to the ground it won't cut so he failed in his attempt to cut wood so it becomes very clear that he was not a skilled wood cutter he had no skill of cutting wood cutting wood requires a skill and he had no skill now as sergey saw it through the window of his dining room sergey's anger had vanished and he now began to feel a little sorry and ashamed of himself for having set a spoiled drunken perhaps sick man to work at menial labor in the cold menial means lowly work he had given a very lowly work lowly household work of wood chopping in that cold climate in that cold climate to a man who is completely spoiled he is a drunken man and perhaps he is a sick man physically weak and frail man he was to him he had given the work of wood chopping for that sergey feels sorry and his anger had vanished his anger had his anger had disappeared and he feels ashamed of 
of setting a man or, or, or involving, a, involving a man, a weak man, a misfit man for wood chopping. Okay, one hour passes. Okay, an hour later, Olga came in and announced that the wood had all been chopped. It is surprising. In the previous paragraph we have seen, she was not even able to chop a small log of wood. Now, after one hour, Volga comes and reports to Sergei that all wood had been chopped. Well, now Sergei has to believe. Sergei has to believe on the words of Olga. Good. Give him half a ruble, said Sergei. If he wants wants to if he wants to he can if he, if he wants to he can come back and cut down on the first day of each month we can always find work for him so every month on the first day he can come to us for wood chopping and he will be given work he says and for that day's work he pays him half a ruble well next paragraph is like this on the first of the month the waif waif means again a homeless beggar waif on the first of the month the waif made his appearance and again earned half a ruble next month again he came on the first and again he was paid half a ruble for wood chopping although he could barely stand on his legs he was very weak, but it, it was very surprising how all wood chopping he was able to do. It's a secret. That secret is revealed towards the end of the story. You will come to know, of course. Hmm? From that day on, he often appeared in the yard. And, and every time, work was found for him. So, frequently he visited the yard yard of Sergei and he was given the work of wood chopping every time. Now he would, now not only the, the work of wood cutting or chopping wood, but the other types of work also were given to him. Okay, now he would shovel snow, that means he will remove the snow with, with the help of shovel, with the help, help of spade or shovel, he will remove, clear the yard of the snow clear the yard of the snow now put the wood shed into order that work also was given to him sometimes to make the wood shed orderly okay now beat the dust out of rugs rugs were to be cleaned that work also he did and mattresses rugs and mattresses he cleaned so different types of work was given to him each time and he did and he was paid for that Every time he received from 20 to 40 kopecks, kopecks are coins, sometimes 20, 30 or 40 coins were paid to him for his work, depending on the work, depending on what work he did, okay. And once even a pair of old trousers were sent out to him, one, a pair of old trousers also were given to him by Sergei. So, in this way the days goes, the, the days go on. Next paragraph. When Sergei moved into another house, he hired him to help in the packing and hauling of the furniture. Now, Sergei has to change his house, okay? And while he is shifting from his house to another one, at that time also, the stranger, the beggar's help, the scop's help was taken by Sergei for hauling or moving the furniture. This time the waif, the beggar, the homeless person, was sober, gloomy and silent. Okay, He came as Sergei called him because he had to move his furniture and the other belongings to a new house. Okay. So this time when the beggar came, he was sober, gloomy and silent. He hardly touched the furniture and walked behind the wagons, hanging his head 
not even making a pretense of appearing busy he didn't look busy at all okay he was somewhat upset there was something on his mind he didn't speak much silently he is walking behind 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 the wagon he only he only sh shivered in the cold he shivered in the cold became embarrassed he became embarrassed okay he became embarrassed embarrassed means uneasy or ashamed you can see here he became very uneasy he felt ashamed he became embarrassed when the carters jeered at him for his idleness and feeble uh, idleness his feebleness and his tattered fancy overcoat carters that means those people who do the work of carting loading and unloading the articles from the cart okay loading the articles household articles on the cart and unloading them so they are the, called the carters so carters were there they had come for load for doing the work of unloading and loading of the household articles of of sergey so they saw this man and they jeered at him they made fun of him jeered at him is they made fun of him because he looked very idle very lazy and he looked very feeble very weak and tight a torn fancy overcoat he was putting on it was old and torn fancy overcoat so the carters made fun of him they poked fun at him okay in this way the the moving the shifting was over after the moving was over sergey sent for him sergey sent for lashkov the beggar well i am happy that my words have taken effect he said handing him a ruble sergey was very happy and he thinks that the beggar is changed now he has started working earlier he shogged from working he didn't want to work at all but sergey thanks himself he thinks that his words have an effect on the fellow and he has changed himself he has changed he, he has changed himself completely that's why he says i'm happy that my words have taken effect he said handing him a ruble one ruble he gives on the on the day when he helped in shifting he thinks that he helped in, helped in shifting here is for, here is for your pains he says i see you are sober and have no objection to work he was impressed by his soberness his simplicity okay and he finds that he is working he thinks he is working and at this time now he asks for the first time what's your name the beggar replies lashkov well lashkov i can offer you some other cleaner employment can you write he says okay i'll be arranging some job for you and he asks can you write i can the beggar says i can then take this letter to a friend of mine tomorrow and you will be given some copying to do the work of copying the document will be given to you by my friend my friend will give you the work of copying the document and i am giving you a letter of reference i am giving you the letter of i am giving you a letter of reference uh, take this letter to my friend okay and he will employ you as a copier so he will give you the work of copying so he gives him a letter of reference he recommends his name to his friend for doing the copying work and he advises him work hard don't drink and remember what i have said to you goodbye he says now he is very happy that he has brought that drunken the drunkard that beggar to the right, uh, on the right track well pleased at having put a man on the right path 
Sergei tapped Laskov kindly on the shoulder and even gave him his hand at parting. Now they were parting. They were moving away from one uh, from each other. So he shakes hand with him. He taps his back, his shoulder and he shakes hands with him. Raskov took the letter, letter of reference in the name of Sergei's friend. He takes the letter and from that day forth came no more to the yard for work. He stops coming to Sergei's house for wood shopping. Now the days pass by. Two years went by. Then one evening as Sergei was standing at the ticket window of a theater paying for his seat, he noticed a little man beside him with a coat collar of curly fur and a worn seal skin cap. Seal skin cap. Sergei had gone to a theater to watch some show and he was buying a ticket at the ticket counter. So he saw a little man, he was putting a coat collar uh, of curly fur and he was putting on a seal skin cap. This little individual timidly, timidly means you see, shyly or bashfully, shyly, in a shy manner, in a bashful manner, shy manner, this little man timidly asked the ticket seller for a seat in the gallery and paid for paid for it in copper coins now that little man had money in his pocket he was financially well off now so he pays in copper coins for the ticket which he buys buys um, from the ticket counter okay so sergey saw it and he asks, Laskov, is that you? cried Sergei, recognizing in the little man his former wood chopper. How are you? What are you doing? How is everything with you? So many questions. He throws on him a volley of questions. So many questions together he, together he asks to Laskov. How are you? What are you doing nowadays? Hmm? How is everything with you? <clears throat> okay. The man replies, Laskov replies, All right, I am a notary now and am paid 35 rubles a month. I am earning 35 rubles a month and I am employed as a notary. Notary means those who approve your documents, okay, those who register your important documents related to your property or estate or anything. So he says, I have become a notary and I am paid 35 rubles a month. This is my monthly earning, he says. That means earlier you see he was paid just a few 30 or 40 copecks for his work or even half a half a, half a, and half a ruble and even sometimes one ruble he was paid but now he is earning 35 rubles per month a month financially he has become well off well when sergey hears it he was moved he was very happy and he says thank heaven that's fine i am delighted for your sake i am very very glad glad i am very very glad lashkov you see you are my godson godson means the son the son who is adopted as one's own and who is taken care of by a person like his own son so he says like god godfather godmother godson it is godson he says you are you see you are my godson you are my godson in a sense <clears throat> i gave you a push along the right path you know do you remember what a roasting i gave you eh, what a roasting i gave you what a tough treatment i gave you he says okay how 
I how harshly I behaved with you he said says in the past okay ah uh, I nearly had you sinking into the ground at my feet that day he says and it was a very tough treatment which I gave you he says okay thank you old man for not forgetting my words you took my words my advice to heart now you are a changed man and you have become you 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 have become a person who is earning his own income okay and who can and who stands on his own feet he is very happy then laskov answers him he says thank you too said laskov if i hadn't come to you then i might still have been calling myself a teacher or a student to this day earlier i was telling lies i was calling myself a school teacher or a student who was expelled from a school so such, sto such stories i was making and telling the people and begging from them i came to you and my life changed he admits it he laskov admits it admits it okay yes by flying to your protection i dragged myself out of a pit i had fallen on, on uh, fallen in a pit in a deep pit he says and i flew to you i flew to your protection you gave me protection and advice and and you dragged me and you dragged me you helped me drag drag myself out of the pit so because of your protection and protection and help i was able to come out of a pit he says and he is very thankful to sergey for that sergey says i am very glad indeed then again laskov says further thank you for your kind words and deeds i am very grateful to you and to your cook volga cook volga he says i am grateful to you and to your cook god bless that good and noble woman in the opinion of laskov the cook volga was a good and noble woman woman with great human qualities okay he says you spoke finely then and i shall be indebted to you to my dying day you were very refined man and spoke very fine language to me and i am i am very indebted indebted to you and i will be indebted to you to my dying day still my death he says but strictly speaking it was your cook olga who saved me he says of course you have your own role but greater but greater than yours the role is that of volga in my life actually it is she who saved me now when laskov tells sergey that volga saved him he says he was surprised he asks asks how is that then laskov reveals the secret he says when i used to come to you when i used to come to your house to chop wood she used to begin oh you sort sort means drunkard you oh you miserable creature these are the names which she used to call she she used to call names to the beggar to raskov and she used to say further there is nothing for you but ruin you will be completely ruined completely dis destroyed your final destruction is waiting you your ruin is waiting is awaiting you there is nothing for you more than that and then she would sit down opposite me and grow sad she used to call him names and then she sat and she became very sad look into my face and weep she used to weep looking 
into the face of the beggar because she was she was extremely kind hearted lady she was an ex, she was an extremely kind hearted lady and she was extremely sympathetic towards the beggar she felt his pain in her own heart and for him she she used to weep looking at his plight looking at his miserable condition she used to weep then again she used to say oh you unlucky man there is no pleasure for you in this world and there will be none in the world to come in this world and in the other world there is no pleasure for you you drunkard you will burn in hell you will go to hell after death she says oh you unhappy one and so she would carry on you know in that strain in that particular way of speaking she would go on calling him names and scolding him in every sense of the word she used to scold him get angry on him okay then what i can't tell you how much misery she suffered she suffered misery pain and sadness for laskov looking at his poor condition okay how many tears she shed for my sake he says for me she used to weep for me towards me she was sympathetic sympathetic and kind he says a great compassion compassion in her heart he, she had for me he says but the chief thing was but the chief thing was she used to chop the wood for me this is the secret which she reveals for the first time to sergey laskov says that i didn't i didn't do wood chopping at all it is she who used to chop wood for me that's why on the first day in the previous one paragraph we have seen on the first day after some time she goes to sergey and reports that wood chopping work has been done and he was paid half a ruble for that but actually that work was not done because he was very unskilled this uh, laskov was very unskilled person he couldn't chop wood at all in the beginning we have seen he, he, he even couldn't chop even a small log of wood so all work of wood chopping was done by volga she was a skilled laborer at that trade she was very skilled do you know sir that i didn't chop one single stick of wood for you she did all this work of wood chopping for me she did it all why this saved me why i changed why i stopped drinking at the sight of her i cannot explain he says it caused a complete transformation in my heart my heart my mind was completely transformed completely changed okay see and he says he says i can't explain i don't understand that when i looked at her i couldn't drink i stopped drinking at the sight of her whenever i tried to drink she appeared before my eyes and i stopped drink i stopped drinking and she saved me and why i changed i can't explain he says why i stopped drinking when i when the thought of her came to my mind i can't say he says such a great impact she had on his mind by her kindness and sympathy she wept for him she blessed him from the core of her heart he knew it and that's why he stopped drinking and he grew in his life he grew in his life when he stopped drinking i only know that owing to her words and noble deeds a change took place in my heart okay her nice kind words and her noble great deeds 
changed me, changed my heart, he says. She set me right and I shall never forget it. It is, it is she who set me right. Such a force was there in her kind behavior that I was set right, he says. Okay, and I shall never forget it. I will always remember it. However, it is time to go now. There goes the bell. They had gone to a theater to watch a show. And as the show was to start, the bell goes. He, so, he says, there goes the bell. Lashkov bowed and departed to the gallery. Departed me, see. Went to the gallery of spectators. To the place where the spectators sit and watch the play. Okay. In, in the theater. And there this beautiful story, my dear boys and girls, is over. This story is by the famous Russian storyteller, Anton Chekhov. There are the questions, you attempt them, there will be some extra questions also, you also attempt those extra questions. That's all for today, have a good day, bye.